Good morning everyone and welcome to another lesson with Mrs. John. Today we are starting a new topic and that is electromagnetism. So this is the second booklet for your standard in electricity. We have finished everything to do with DC and capacitors. I know there have been a couple of queries with the assignment and I will make little videos to explain those. But for today's lesson, let's make a start with electromagnetism. So today's lesson is mainly going to be things that you already know, but I'm also going to introduce a couple of new terms with you. So what we're going to look at today is what is electromagnetism? We're going to be looking at magnetic fields, what's magnetic field strength and a couple of new terms about magnetic flux and flux density. Okay, so what is electromagnetism? So electromagnetism is really the study of the relationship between electric currents and magnetic fields. So there's a connection between the two because whenever you have electrons flowing or whenever charges flow around them there is a magnetic field. Now looking at what we learned in year 11 you could have charges flowing through a wire. Now the wire could be don't have any accessories here but it could be a long straight wire so if there's a current in a wire and the wire is a long straight wire there is going to be a circular magnetic field around the wire however this cir the circles that we represent the lines that we represent to draw the circles are not evenly spaced they're quite close when it's close to the wire itself but they get further away the further you go from it because the crowding of these field lines gives you an indication of the strength of the magnetic field okay and we find out what is if the magnetic field is circular yes but a circle could be clockwise or anti-clockwise and we use the right hand grip rule to figure out what is the direction of the magnetic field provided we know the direction of the current. So how do we use the right hand grip rule? So I've just got my whiteboard marker with me. I've got my thumb pointing in the direction of the current. So it could be going up, it could be going down. You could go to the left or to the right. You could go out of the page or you could go into the page. So there's actually six directions. Okay, and looking at the way the fingers are curving around, you could have it going clockwise or anti-clockwise or down the page or up the page. You know, you can have all sorts of combinations into the page, out of the page. Okay, and the formula that is associated with, just rub this out, when you have a straight wire and so there's your wire could carry a current so if it's going upwards field is going that way so you've got your magnetic field going that way and then you've got your concentric circles if you have a point let's say x at a distance d from the wire and the wire is carrying a current, size of the current is I, your magnetic field strength at this point X, some distance away from the wire, is given by B is equal to mu naught over two pi I over D. Now you may not have come across the mu naught over two pi. That's probably a new thing. So mu naught is actually called the permeability of free space and it is a constant and it's 1.26 times 10 to the power of negative 6 teslas per meter and if you actually put this mu naught over 2 pi into your calculator so if you put 1.26 exponent negative 6 divided by open brackets 2 times pi close bracket I get this number 
2.00 times 10 to the power of negative 7. So in your year 11, you were given just one number there and that was called k and you were, and you were given b is equal to ki over d where k is actually the value for mu naught over 2 pi which is 2.0 times 10 to the power of negative 7 tesla per meter. So that's what how you get the magnetic field strength up at a, uh, for a point away from the wire. So the smaller the value of D, bigger the magnetic field strength. Okay. Now just to define what is a magnetic field, it is the area around a magnet or around a current carrying wire where another charge would feel a force. Now just coming on to where else do you have magnetic fields? You do have magnetic fields around a magnet. So you could have a bar magnet. You saw one with the current carrying wire when it was straight, but the field around a bar magnet is, it's not a uniform magnetic field, but it is, that's kind of the shape of the magnetic field. And these field lines go out of the north into the south. So that's the magnetic field around a bar magnet. But however, if you have two magnets, so it could have similar poles or opposite poles facing each other. So let's have both. So north, south, north, south north, south, south, north. So you've got similar poles there. And your field lines. Now, because those are opposite poles, between two opposite poles of a magnet, you have what's called a uniform magnetic field. And a uniform magnetic field is represented by parallel lines, which are evenly spaced. Okay, and just outside, they're not uniform. So that's why you have the curved lines. Just get the direction. So from the north to the south, from the north into the south, out of the north, and I'll be careful here, it goes from the north to the south. So it's this way. And from the north to the south, into the south. So that's what this one looks like. And if you have similar poles facing each other, they're going to repel, right? So like poles repel and unlike poles attract. That's the law of magnets. So out of the north, into the south, into the south, out of the north. So that's what these look like. Okay, you just have to be familiar with the shape of the magnetic field around a bar magnet because I was just going to do what does uh, what happens if you pass a current through a coil of wire so rather than being a straight wire if you have a coil you have a solenoid so yes the the field around each of the coils of the solenoid add up and the, sh the resultant shape of the magnetic field is you end up with a uniform magnetic field inside the solenoid but outside the solenoid the shape of the field is like that of a bar magnet. So let me just draw that diagram for a solenoid and also I'll give you a formula which you can use to calculate the strength of the magnetic field inside the solenoid. We're not really worried about the strength of the magnetic field outside the solenoid because it's not a uniform field, okay? But inside it is uniform and the word uniform means that the strength is the same, it doesn't change. Okay. So a solenoid is a coil of wire and 
And in order to make, in order to have a magnetic field inside a solenoid, you need to connect it to some source of a power. You need a current flowing through it. And the direction of the magnetic field really depends on the direction of the current. So if the current stops, the magnetic field stops. If you have a bigger current, you can have a bigger magnetic field. Or if you also have more turns of the coil, that means the longer length of wire, then again, your strength of the magnetic field increases. So let me just draw that. So the long line of the battery represents the positive end. So current goes out of the positive and into the negative. So the dotted lines I've drawn represents the back of the solenoid. So let's see how the current goes. So it goes down, 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 goes up and comes down. Okay, so how do we figure out which end of this? So there's going to be a magnetic field and the way that I can draw this magnetic field, this green's not very good. So magnetic field lines never cross each other. So they kind of go like this. Screen's quite faint. I hope you can see something. Okay, so if you notice, I've got parallel lines inside the solenoid, evenly spaced parallel lines indicating that it's a uniform field. Okay, magnetic field is represented by field lines. And now I wonder now what direction am I going to put the arrows? So you know it goes out of the north into the south, but how do we figure out which is the north end? Um, that has been induced over here. So again, we use the right hand grip rule. So if you're left handed, make sure it's your right hand that you're using because otherwise you get, you're gonna get your answers flipped. Okay, so the same thing that I did, but this time it's the current that is going in circles because the wire is coiled. So my curved fingers represent the direction of the current and my thumb is the direction of the magnetic field. So the direction of the magnetic field is the direction in which the North Pole would go. So it's going out of the North Pole. So wherever my thumb points, that is the North end of the magnet, okay? So let's look at this one. It's all coming down. See the red arrows are pointing down. So I need to bring my fingers down. My thumb is pointing that side. So, oops, one slid somewhere. So that's my north end, say if my thumb is there, so this end will become south. So if I need to draw my arrows to represent, so it goes outside the magnet, the magnetic field lines go from the north to the south. So out of the north, goes out of the north and into the south. But inside the magnet, it's continuous, right? So it's going like this. So inside it goes from the south to the north because how else will it continue that arrow, okay? So inside goes from the south to the north, outside, out the north, into the south. It's like saying, if you have two doors in, in a room to go in and out, if you're going through the room, you're going in one direction, but when you're going outside the room, you're going in the other direction and coming in through that door. It's just a loop. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Now, just a little more extra information. There is a formula that is used to calculate the strength of the magnetic field inside the solenoid. Now, the strength of the magnetic field, the term that you've been using in year 11 and 12 is represented by the letter B, and that is equal to mu naught N I. So I'll tell you what all these stand for. So B stand tells you how strong the magnetic field is. Your mu naught is the permeability of free space, which is 1.26 times 10 to the power of negative 6 Tesla per meter. Now the capital N stands for the number of turns per meter, how many turns of the coil there are, but it's the number of turns per meter. Okay, and I stands for your current. So the more number of turns there are, the more coils you, you have the longer the wire, okay? So you could have a loosely coiled wire or tightly coiled wire. So that's why the end represents number of turns per meter, okay? Right, so this, all, um, this bit was kind of like a revision. I'll just um, bring in one more little thing. So let's say you have 
the scenario where there's a current passing through a solenoid and so you have this magnetic field and it's almost like there's an invisible magnet here with the north end there and the south end there. If you bring an additional bar magnet and you have the north pole of the bar magnet here, the North Pole is going to feel a force because if you have two magnets, it'll, it could either be an attractive or a repulsive force. If it's a North End, it's going to feel a repulsive force and it's going to feel a force away. So the way that this one, it's going to feel a force that side. Okay. But if on the other hand, if instead of the North Pole, you had the south pole of the magnet here, then you know opposite poles attract, so this will feel an attractive force there. Okay, right. So I hope you understood that much. Now I'm going to move on to something new, a term called magnetic flux. And in year 13, that's a really good term to use. So instead of using the word magnetic field and magnetic field strength, we're going to use a few new terms and I'm going to talk to you about that now, okay? So the word is magnetic flux. The symbol for magnetic flux is rho, okay? And the unit is Weber, WB. Okay, so what is magnetic flux? Magnetic flux is the amount of magnetic field in a particular area. So, your magnetic flux is the amount of magnetic field in a particular area. And magnetic flux is represented by lines of flux. So what we have been calling magnetic field lines, from now on, we're going to use the word lines of flux. Okay, so this represents lines of flux. So I'm drawing four lines of flux. So what is this magnetic flux is how much of magnetic field is there in a particular area. I'm going to draw that separate. So I've drawn, so this is one area, that's another area. So you can see that the lines are more crowded here because the area is small. So it's the same number of lines in a smaller area. So we come up for B, which we use, we've called it magnetic field strength. We actually can call it, there's another word for B, it's called flux density, okay? So flux density has to do with magnetic flux, how much of magnetic flux divided per unit area. So, so, lo so far we've been using the unit for magnetic field strength, which is also now known as flux density. The unit that we were using was Tesla, but there's also one more unit because um, flux is represented by Weber. That's a unit in which it is measured. And area is meter squared, but it's divided by area. So flux density or magnetic field strength has actually got two units of measurement. One of them is Tesla and the other one is Weber per meter squared. So I'll write up some notes. I'll put this up on um, your Google Classroom as well as I'll make a, some Google Slides with this so that there's a sequence. Now there is one task I'd like you to do. So if you've understood this, could you also turn to page 11 in your booklets and this is like a revision from year 11 or maybe even 12 could you just do these questions on magnetic flux it's the same as magnetic field but we're now going to use the word magnetic flux okay so this is just finding just telling like the closer point is to a wire the stronger the magnetic field and then this was similar example to what I've just done what happens if you bring a north or south pole of a magnet uh, close to a solenoid in which there's a current flowing okay so I hope that made sense bye for now